What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Corey, I will be your host today. Um, so I'm 11 official days off of Kratom. Um, if you were just now happening upon my channel, um, I talk about a little bit of everything on here. You know, I don't, I talk a lot about Kratom, but it's because uh, Kratom is still federally legal. Um, and is still legal in most states and so the availability of Kratom in my opinion um, is a problem now again I don't campaign against Kratom on here there are people in this world who are able to use something like Kratom responsibly I know people who use Vicodins and Percocets responsibly my parents are two of those people um, my, my dad uh, had an uh, inner ear um, injury years ago uh, where a, a medical person, which this is ironic the, the way this happened, but um, a nurse who was not qualified to do so uh, went to clean out his ear and actually ruptured one of his eardrums and um, is for the last 20 years of his life it has caused him um, you know issues with not only hearing but um, you know discerning where different sounds are coming from like when there's a lot of different sounds going on at one time he, he has trouble you know discerning where those sounds are coming from whether they're coming from over here or over there or from behind them you know that sort of thing um, and it, it's a result of that inner ear damage and uh, he'll have headaches you know a few times a month as a result of that um, but my dad's one of those people that gets a prescription for Percocet, but then he never takes them. He never takes them unless he needs them, you know, um, which is not all that often. And, and, you know, then my mother has a uh, back pain, um, from where she was in a car accident about 15 years ago. And, uh, you know, she takes some, some of the lighter, well, I think actually at this point, I don't even think she takes any pain pills at this point i think they've got her on a, a patch like a pain patch um i think that's actually what she's doing at this point but um you know two of the most important people in my life um are users of narcotics and they use them responsibly so it can be done in addition my wife um, and you guys have heard me talk about this you know when i was using kratom my wife would often use kratom with me but she didn't use Kratom like I used Kratom. She would take, you know, a couple of grams per day, maybe a gram or two per day. It was always in the morning. She never took it for the rest of the day, never had any withdrawals, never had any trouble sleeping, never even developed a tolerance for Kratom, right? So, again, we when we look at this and we look at, at Kratom as a, a potential problem or possibly a future epidemic in terms of stuff that people are getting addicted to, you get different levels. It's just like anything else. You know, obesity is a disease. Some people are a little bit obese, and then you have people that are morbidly obese. Very, very, very obese. You know, and, and it's one of those things where there are, um, there's levels to everything, you know, and their addiction is no different. There, there are levels to it. And there are people that, um, you know, never really develop a tolerance. It's, it's not something that, you know, when, when they first take it, it's not one of those things where they're just like, oh, I have found the love of my life. You know, whereas me, the first time I ever tried a Vicodin, I was like, I love you, Vicodin. I love you so much. You just... You just mean so much to me. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't literally do that, but I definitely had the thought of, damn, this feels good, you know? But then you have other people that uh, take the same Vicodin and 20 minutes later, like, ugh, I don't feel real good. I don't like the way this makes me feel, you know? kind of makes me feel loopy kind of takes me out of my head or it kind of makes me feel a little bit nauseated or dizzy and you know there there are people out there that just don't freaking like it like you like it or like i like it and that's one of the parts of um drug addiction that even science can't really explain that right i mean 
there are parts of this that just can't really be explained. You know, why certain people tend to love and gravitate towards the feeling that an opiate or an opiate-like substance might give you. And then on the flip side of that same coin, there are people who will take that same opiate-like substance and their body and their mind kind of repels it like, oh, uh, you know, I didn't enjoy that. And it's funny, I've talked to people like that before, you know, and that's where you get, um, I mean, back in my active drug addiction, you know, 20 years ago, and I've talked about this, how many kitchen cabinets and bathroom cabinets I went through looking for old, you know, opiate medications that people had left. And I mean, there's, there's all kinds of people like that, that, you know, you'll look up in their cabinet and there's a, you know, you peel back in the back where, where nobody ever looks and, oh, look, they got, you know, a half bottle of unused Percocet that's four years old sitting in the back of their, you know, I mean, how long do you think a bottle of Percocet would last in my possession four years more like four days bro <laughs> four days you know and a lot of you are the same way and that's how you ended up on this channel so I just I talk about all that I don't really know exactly what I'm gonna talk about today I have a couple of things uh, I ran across an interesting article this morning because um, a lot of people that end up on this channel are trying to come off of Kratom and then a lot of what we discuss on here is ways to do that, ways to do that, that it's not going to be um, super, super, super detrimental to you in your life. And it's, you know, because people have responsibilities, right? People have life responsibilities. And a lot of people can't just, you know, take all of their responsibilities put them in a storage box, set it up on the shelf, and just leave them there for a couple of weeks while they try to get through these withdrawals, right? A lot of people can't do that. They've got children, they've got jobs, they've got other, you know, familial responsibilities or family responsibilities that they need to take care of. You know, there's all these other things that people have to do in their lives where they can't just, oh, well, you know what? I think I'm just going to you know, lock myself in a, in my bedroom for three weeks and just, you know, renege on every one of my adult responsibilities and just go through these withdrawals and feel like shit. No big deal. Ah, my job will wait for me. I'm that important at my place of employment that they'll just absolutely just let me stay home for three weeks straight and, and get through these withdrawals, right? It's important. It's important for me, you know? Nah, this is the real world, homie, and, and we don't, you know, um, not a lot of people are in that situation, you know, and you look at somebody like, uh, it reminds me of that movie, um, I, I know a lot of you guys have probably seen the movie Ray, about uh, Ray Charles, the, the musician back in the day, great, 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 great movie, if you've never seen it, I'm sure most of you have, Jamie Foxx freaking nails it, I mean, he's, he is Ray Charles, in that movie but as you know Ray Charles suffered with a really really severe heroin addiction for um, you know a lot of his younger life and um, it shows in the movie when he finally decided to go to rehab and get help um, yeah, homeboy just dropped off the face of the planet for like a good month you know and went into rehab and and you know went through the withdrawals they they say that he did not get a lot of help with those withdrawals he just he got to a point where he had made up his mind that he didn't want to take that shit anymore. And even when the doctors tried to give him something to kind of help take the edge off and, you know, help him get through the withdrawals, he didn't want it. You know, he wanted to experience the, the full on, you know, spectrum and sickness of the withdrawals. I have uh, my own interpretation as to why he did that. And, and there's a lot of studies and there's a lot of belief in the fact that you need to experience those withdrawals because if you don't take a bunch of shit to mud, mud them down and to numb them down and stuff like that, there's a lot of belief that maybe that'll help your ass not use it again. You know, when you really have to experience how shitty it feels to go into like a full on cold turkey sort of withdrawal. A lot of people believe that, you know, that's enough to help you not get hooked into it again. And I will say 
that, you know, back in the day when I was um, on the Vicodin and the Percocets really bad, I did, both times that I quit, I did a cold turkey. I didn't get help. I didn't go to some rehab center and get Suboxone and, uh, and all these other things. Um, the, the very first time that I quit the Percocet, I did an absolute cold turkey by myself. No help whatsoever. And I wasn't even taking any supplements. I mean, I was eating healthy, trying to exercise, trying to drink a bunch of water, trying to eat some bananas, you know, and I, I was taking like a multivitamin or something. But, bro, when you're coming off of several years of heavy use of something like Percocet and abusing something like Percocet, that shit barely, yeah, I mean, I don't even think it helped at all. You know, I, I was in a state of complete hell for about two weeks, physical hell for about two weeks. Well, mental and emotional as well. And the mental and emotional extended past that, but the physical part of it, you know, right about two weeks. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are, are uh, of the belief that maybe you should feel how shitty it feels to, to have that full on spectrum of withdrawals. And maybe the next time you go to use those, you'll think to yourself, Ooh, no, 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 no. And you'll remember how freaking hellish and how horrible it was. And maybe you'll think twice. I know I have again, throughout the years I've talked about this, there have been, you know, a couple of handfuls of times in the past 15, 20 years where, you know, one of us, myself or my wife or somebody would, you know, get like a tooth pulled or something. You get, you know, a little bottle of tin Vicodin or something like that. And I have used them a few times since I came off of them, you know, over 15 years ago. But um, I was very careful to never get to that point where I was at that tipping point where I was taking them enough. You know, after that bottle was gone, that was it. That was it. I didn't go out and try to seek any more. I didn't try to do any of that because I remembered. I remembered how horrible, how deplorable, how heinous. I mean, there are not enough descriptive words to describe how horrible the withdrawals were from that. And, uh, and, and my mind and my body remembered that. So it definitely served a purpose in that case. I'm not suggesting for any of you to go and do a cold turkey withdrawal. There are ways to get around it. And um, we talk about that a lot on here. And that's one of the things that keeps people using, you know. And that's one of the things that people are really scared of are the withdrawals. And a lot of the people... I mean, more of the comments, a lot of the comments that I get on here are people that are trying to taper down because most of you, if you've been using something like Kratom or some other sort of opiate for an extended period of time, if you've ever tried to curtail that use or lower that use or God forbid, just stop abruptly altogether, you know what I'm talking about. You know what kind of feelings that can give you and how horrible that feeling is. And, um, and so that's why a lot of people pop onto the channel because it's full of people who are trying to lower their use um, or either get completely off of it or whatever the case is. And um, again, for any potential trolls out there, um, I had a troll that, that I mean, he, he, this guy commented on one of my videos like three months ago. You guys know I've only been doing this for about four months, right? Literally, my first video on this channel was probably about four months ago. And um, this guy commented on a video that I did like probably three months ago, you know, back when I was still using Kratom and stuff like that. And and he's the one that popped, oh, I've been taking Kratom and popping extracts and this and that for the longest period of time. I didn't have any withdrawals at all when I stopped. Nah, man. Kratom's not a narcotic, it's a botanical. Get it right. Or some shit like that. And I was just like... And then that's what... With that, that's how I cr kind of created that... The tipping point. You heard me talk about the tipping point on here. I'm like... If you didn't experience any withdrawals, if that's true... You must not have been taking it very long. Or you must not have been taking very much. Because... 
if you get to the point where you're taking it consistently um, in large doses or even moderate doses for a, an extended period of time, you are absolutely 1 million percent going to have some withdrawals. And if you don't, then congratulations. You're different than every other biological human walking the face of this planet. And I look on my phone this morning and I did a video about that, calling that guy out, like the whole nine, you know, just responding to this troll. I left a comment, responded to him. I was tempted to block him, but I didn't. And, uh, and sure enough, I go to the urinal this morning, three months later, three months later, I go to the urinal this morning and I'm standing there pissing, you know, and I pull my phone up and I'm like, huh, YouTube notification. I look up at it. It's that guy. It's the troll that I haven't heard from in three months. The one that claims he just used the shit out of Kratom and, and never had any sort of withdrawals at all. And he had people jumping on his comment asking like, hey, bro, how long were you using it? Because, you know, it just sounded fishy as hell. It sounded like he didn't have a lot of experience with Kratom. And, um, and what do you know? The troll was back, you know? And uh, said something about, LOL, you've never even met me. I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't have to meet you. You're human, aren't you? You're not an alien, right? You're not an alien ending up on my YouTube video, are you? Oh, this is crazy. Are you from, are you a non-biological being? You know, <laughs> I don't have to know you. I don't have to know you. There are millions and millions and millions of people across the world that will disagree with your assessment. Yes, Kratom is a botanical. Absolutely. No one's arguing that. You know, morphine, opium is a botanical. But it'll still get you fucking hooked, won't it? It still will cause people to rob pharmacies and steal oxycodone, won't it? Come on, bro. Codeine. Where do you think codeine comes from, jackass? It comes from a freaking plant. It's one of the alkaloids. You know, yeah, Kratom is a botanical. Absolutely. But Kratom can still get your ass tweaked and hooked. Don't get it twisted. And I had to explain to him again, bro, I'm not on here campaigning against Kratom. Oh, because, oh, listen to this. This is what he said to me. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys leaving like a, a one sentence comment. You know, he never really gets deep in the weeds because I think he knows he's just a, you know, a bitch troll or whatever. And uh, he, he left one comment. He said, um, what'd he say? Not campaigning. He says something about, uh, on here talking about Kratom or he says something to the effect of like campaigning on here campaigning against Kratom that's weak bro oh no uh, campaigning against Kratom for views that's weak bro I'm like okay well you know when people hear what you're saying when people relate to what you're saying and People are getting help just by hearing someone else who shares a similar story with them. The views kind of, you know, kind of comes with the territory. I mean, people can't see it and relate to it without viewing it. I mean, <laughs> it's, not, it's not rocket science, bro. You know, you viewed it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here arguing with your dumb ass about this. You viewed it, you know. I mean, it, what, what, you're blaming people, you're blaming me for people viewing it now? I, I mean, you know, it's cool that they are. That means more people are getting some help and getting some comfort, you know, with, and, and just the whole understanding that there are other people experiencing the thing, th same thing that you're experiencing. And, you know, when people, uh, camaraderie is a serious thing, you know, and, and, you know, when you, when you have one finger, that's one finger. When you put multiple fingers together, that makes what? A fist. And it's more powerful. You know, when you when we, you know, send people, you know, back in the 
Civil War days when they were fighting wars. I mean, how often did you see one person show up on the other side of the field to fight thousands? You didn't. Because one person is not as powerful as more people. Right? You know, and there's over 300 subscribers, over 300 subscribers on my channel now. So you got over 300 people who are going, yeah, dude, hey, me too. Yeah, yeah. And when you're suffering with something like an addiction to something like Kratom and you're kind of at your wit's end and you don't know how to proceed forward and you really want to get off of it, that helps. Just knowing that there's other people. And then, in addition to that, seeing that there's someone and someone else out there who is making improvements and who has come off of it, that's empowering. Because if that guy can do it, well, damn, you know, He's a biological human just like I am. He's got feelings and emotions and pain signaling and all these other things in his body just like I do. He's not a cyborg. He's an actual guy. He's an actual human. And he's doing it. Well, what does that mean? <gasps> oh, wow. That means maybe I can do it. Oh, my gosh. Mind blown. You jackass troll. Get off of my channel. I haven't blocked him yet just because I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to say something else. I'm hoping that he says something else so that I can print it out and then blast him in my tomorrow's video just because I like doing that. Um, so I'm going to give him a little bit of time. But if he doesn't say anything about about five today, I'm probably just going to go ahead and block him and be done with it. Um, because I just don't like wasting my time on it. And when someone comes and says something really stupid like this guy does... Um, you know, I mean, it's one of those where I kind of feel obligated, you know, on behalf of everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I, I kind of feel this obligation to put the person in his place. Um, oh, and one thing he said, too, this was kind of funny. He said, you're obnoxious, but I'm more obnoxious. Trust. Here's the ironic part. He said, you're, Y-O-U-R, you're obnoxious. I was like, okay, first off, bro, learn the correct use of your and you are, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E as a contraction. Learn the correct usage of those two before you come and try to start arguing with an educated man or debating with an educated man about Kratom. You're telling me you're like Mr. Know-it-all about Kratom and you don't even know the correct use of your and you are? Fuck off, dude. Anyway, I, I said I wasn't going to do the whole language thing on here, so I'm going to stop doing that. Um, i got about 10 minutes left, so... Thanks for listening to me rant. Um, yeah, real quick, I'm 11 days off, so I'm pretty good at this point. Um, I haven't really been experiencing... I didn't have any issues last night. My sleep is definitely starting to kind of settle in some. Through this whole process, I have been using a little bit of kava most nights. There's a couple of nights where I did it. Um, but at first, you know, I was using some kava. I was using a little bit of melatonin just to kind of make sure I was trying to get some sleep. Because as you know, I got a baby at home. So sleep is kind of hard to come by as it is for this guy right here. And so what I've done um, is I hadn't taken the melatonin in probably it's probably been four or five days since I've taken a melatonin. I just kind of stopped with that. Um, I have been taking a little bit of kava, but I've significantly lessened my amount. Um, and in other words, yesterday, um, I took even less than what is supposed to be a dose for one person um, at a time. I didn't take even that much for the whole day. I just took a, a couple of swigs. You know, so a kava, some water and kava that I needed, um, not needed N E E D E D, but needed K N E A D, <laughs> needed like squeezed and you know got all the kava, uh, kava lactones and stuff out of it. So I drank about um, half of a serving size last night just to kind of help me, you know, sleep a little bit, and my sleep's pretty good at this point other than having a baby waking me up as far as it relate as it relates to coming off of the kratom um i'm pretty much back to normal i did do a taper for any of you out there that are trying to come off of kratom 
you are welcome to, um, you know, go back and watch. I would say if you go back and watch about my last, mm, maybe 20 videos, 15 to 20 videos, that's right around the time where I started uh, tapering again this last time. And I took it, I talked about it. I took it all the way down to, to my taper, to my lower amounts, lower amounts, lower amounts, until I was officially off of it. And you can watch that process, and I talk about what I did, what helped, you know, how bad my symptoms were. I talked about all of these things. And that will lead you all the way up to where I am now, where I'm 11 days officially off of Kratom. So that's the way to go. You know, if you're not a person that you feel like you can really stick to a cold turkey uh, sort of situation, then, you know, um, do a taper. You know, you can get out of it with, you know, somewhat minimal discomfort. And, and a lot of people would, you know, don't want to hear me say that because they want me to, Kratom can be bad and the withdrawals can be severe depending on how much someone's using and how long they've been using it. So a lot of people don't really want me to say that, like, oh no, don't tell people it's not bad. If you haven't taken Kratom and you're thinking about taking Kratom, be aware that withdrawals from Kratom, especially if you've been taking a lot for a long period of time every day consistently, they can be really bad. And uh, according to a lot of people, they can be as bad as heroin or Percocet or Vicodin. I've never had that experience, but... I also was not using an ungodly amount of Kratom. Well, why is that? Because I kind of learned my lesson a little bit back in the day because I was abusing the shit out of Percocets and Vicodins back in the day. And uh, and the withdrawals were just absolutely hellish. Okay? And once I learned, after I was already using Kratom, once I learned that you could receive some of the same sort of withdrawals or similar withdrawals as other opiates... Um, I always kind of had this, you know, governor, I guess, in my brain where I just wouldn't really go over like a certain amount. And when it came to Kratom, I had periods of time. I had days where maybe I would use a little more because we would go to this Kratom bar and I would have some of their drinks and, you know, a couple of soda, Kratom sodas and things like that. So I was definitely getting more on days like that, but I didn't do that a lot, you know, and, and on a general like ongoing basis I was never really using more than like maybe 10 grams 12 grams of Kratom every day I never really on a consistent basis got much above that so when I went to taper um this last time I mean I had some some mental anguish you know and some boredom and just kind of some feelings of like oh damn what do I do now I'm used to being high on Kratom this kind of sucks you know a little bit of low energy stuff like that, but uh, with this taper method, I honestly, sincerely did not have a lot of the physical withdrawals uh, accompany me at that time, and I'm just being honest about that, so if you're on 20, 30 grams of Kratom, and I have people message me every day saying, I was taking this amount, I'm down to this amount, I hope I can stick with it, I know you can, I know you can, um, and, and, you know, that's what a lot of people are doing. And if you can stick with it and you can stay focused, you can get out of this without just being completely ran over by an 18-wheeler, okay? And I'm living proof of it. It wasn't nearly as bad if you actually do a taper. This is my first time actually doing a taper. Anytime I ever quit, uh, you know, some sort of opiate in the past, I quit Vicodin and Percocets twice, probably 15 to 20 years ago when I was, you know, really heavy on those. And then some years later, uh, last year, in fact, once I found Kratom, I was taking MIT-45s regularly and I quit that once as well, cold turkey. So what I've experienced this time, this is absolutely my first time ever doing a complete taper and finishing the taper and coming completely off and I can tell you if you are able to remain consistent and remain strong in your mindset and persevere through a taper 
and not take more than you're supposed to and not have times where you're taking more and then you're taking less and then you're taking more again and then you're taking less. If you can stick with the taper, it's not nearly as bad. Let's, let me just leave it there, okay? Um, and you can watch my videos and, and figure out how to do that. So um, the name of this article is called Tyrosine and Dopamine in Addiction. Tyrosine is something that I've been using uh, recently. Oh, let me back up for a second. So I was talking about uh, I haven't taken melatonin in a little while, that I have still been using a little bit of kava. I'm almost out of the kava. And um, I will say I probably have a couple of more mixtures I can make. And, um, and then I won't be purchasing any more kava. Because I'm at a point now where I feel like I can probably sleep without it. I feel like I'll probably be fine. Um, I kind of just wanted to use it to get through those that first week or so, you know, since the um, the, the you know acute withdrawals would kind of be lingering around a little bit once I completely came off. And uh, so I won't be purchasing any more kava after this. I'm not saying I never will because kava is not addictive for me. Uh, it just doesn't make me feel good enough, to be honest with you. I mean, it's kind of like relaxes your body a little bit and it will make you somewhat sleepy if if you lay it lay it down after you take it but you know it doesn't really do a lot for me um so that that's what my plan is after i get finished with this bag of it i won't buy any more of that and then i'll be letting you guys know how it feels to just be completely off of all of it um because they do say that kava can help kind of tone down uh the withdrawal symptoms and uh, and so, you know, I, I don't think it's too much because I could definitely feel a difference in even with kava, how I felt a week ago versus how I feel now, right? So it might've helped a little bit, but um, you know, Kratom is completely different than, than what kava is um, in my experience. But anyway, dopamine is often called the pleasure molecule and is associated with the reward center of the brain. Many natural activities such as eating and sex yeah, can trigger the release of dopamine, creating the pleasurable feeling. Our brain registers that activity as a reward and something we want to do again as it was enjoyable. A reward, uh, a reward motivated behavior. Drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, and even food work in this same reward system. However, to a greater effect. The overstimulant, they overstimulate the production of dopamine, flooding the brain with its release and causing a high. This feeling of euphoria is one that cannot be obtained with natural dopamine releasing activities. Once the addictive substance is no longer present, studies show that during withdrawal, these levels of dopamine diminish and deplete. This often creates a yearning to go back to that behavior that produced the high which is why it's hard not to continue using, right? I preach this on here all the time, but I wanted to give you, you know, a more scientific sort of breakdown of it. Um, and this is what fuels drug-seeking behavior, right? It all makes sense now, right? Uh, tyrosine is an amino acid found in many high-protein foods, such as chicken, turkey, soy products, cheese, milk, nuts, and seeds. Tyrosine is a precursor to the production of dopamine. In recovery, dopamine levels are diminished and off balance due to the habit of obtaining large amounts of dopamine from the addictive substance. Low levels of dopamine could contribute to low mood, fatigue, and cravings for the drug of choice. Dopamine also plays a role in helping with concentration and alertness, both of which are beneficial for all. Restoring the natural balance of production of dopamine is an important step in recovery. Incorporating foods that are high in protein throughout the day helps to slow sta slowly stabilize the production of dopamine in recovering addicts. However, not all dietary tyrosine consumed is used by the brain to produce neurotransmitters. There are many other functions for this amino acid in your body, and therefore having sufficient amounts to supply all functions is important. Due to the compromised diet of those with an addiction, it is beneficial in early recovery to incorporate protein 
at all three meals and three snacks to maximize the potential effects. Eating high protein meals supports stable energy levels and helps reduce cravings for the addictive substance by increasing the presence of dopamine in the body through natural means. All right, so uh, so tyrosine um, is a neurotransmitter, basically, that helps to uh, create these amino acids that basically help to build dopamine in your body. So I've used L-tyrosine. Um, you're not, well, they don't know for sure, but it, you're probably not supposed to use it every day. It's okay for like a short term. It's not addictive. I will say that. it's just a neurotransmitter. It's not addictive. Um, uh, not a neurotransmitter. It's an amino acid. So it's not addictive, right? Uh, it's not a drug. So don't worry about that. But um, it can help your body to, you know, naturally create a little more dopamine during these times of coming off of some substance where your dopamine depleted. So I just want to kind of throw that out there. That has helped me a little bit. Um, within the following week, next couple of weeks, I'm probably going to stop taking it just so I can get back to baseline normal and just, you know, depend on my diet for it and all that stuff. Uh, the last thing I want to say is, um, don't be fooled as to why, you know, I get on here and I seem really happy and this and that and the other. And a lot of people think like, you know, is this guy acting? I mean, he's only 11 days off of Kratom. So shouldn't you be miserable? Um, not really. You know, I have a lot to be thankful for. And I remind myself of that every day. And I'm a very blessed individual. I have a beautiful wife, beautiful home, two beautiful children, beautiful parents, beautiful uh brother you know beautiful in-laws i mean i just have a great relationship with everyone around me and i'm just a good job i'm just a blessed individual so that's why you see me being the way i am all right and you need to write that stuff down every day and remind yourself have an attitude of gratitude be thankful for what you have not for what you don't see things as they can be not as they are all right i love you guys appreciate you watching i'll see you next time